3 discussion, we will be discussing about mga ato na nga mga other lights. Since we already discussed the measurement and also mga tools na ginagamit ta for measurement. Okay, a first important distinction we will make is among the term of your analysis, determination, and also your measurement. Okay, you will need to identify the difference between them. An analysis provides the chemical or physical information about the sample. The compound, uh, the component in the sample of the interest is what you call your analyte. Okay, and the remainder of the sample is the matrix. Okay, in an analysis, we determine the identity, the concentration, and also the properties of your analyte. To make this determination, we measure one or more of the analyte as chemical or physical yang uh, properties. Okay, an example, we will be helping to clarify between your difference sa mga analysis, determination, kag also measurement. Okay, in 1974, the federal government enacted the Safe Drinking Water Act to ensure the safety of the nation's public drinking water supplies. To comply with this act, municipalities monitor their drinking water supply for the potential harmful substances such as your Fecal chloroform bacteria. Okay, what is fecal chloroform bacteria? That is the mga bacteria, okay, nga usually makita mo if it, the water is contaminated with stool. Okay, what is stool? Okay, other terms ang stool is your fecal. And in layman's term, it is your tae. Okay, then your manabasli water department collect and, okay, collect and analyze the samples from their water supply to determine the concentration of your fecal chloroform bacteria. An analysis passes a portion of your water through a membrane filter, places okay, the filter in the dish that contains a nutrient prot and incubate the sample for 22 to 24 hours at a 44.5 degree Celsius. Okay, you have also the your positive negative. 0 0.2 degree Celsius. Ibig sabihin, you have a range of a max of 44.7 and lowest mo range is 44.3. Okay, at the end of the incubation period, the analyze, uh, analy analyze count of your number of your bacteria colony in the dish and report the result as the number of colonies per ml. Okay, does the muni uh, municipal water department analyze samples of your water to determine the concentration of your fecal coliform bacteria by measuring the number of your bacteria colonies that form during the carefully defined incubation period. Okay, dapat kamo may mga standard kamo ginatawag, which is parias di, you have the standardized time, which is your 22 to 24 hours, ibig sabihin, a day of incubation. More than that, ibig sabihin na nga yung mga bacteria is either tama na gitadamo nga nag-grow, kaya napabayaan lang, wala mo siya na-count in a, a optimized nga setting, which is 22 to 24 hours, or nag-lesse ng yung mga bacteria tungod kinaubusan na sang nutrients ang yung mga broth. And also, makita nyo manda, you have that the temperature kung sa di mo gina-incubate and ang imo nga pag-counting. Okay, also you have here the yung uh, representation that in sa imo result is in every 100 ml. Okay, it ensures nga daw in a given 100 uh, ml of your sample. We have here an example of your uh, colonies of fecal coliform bacteria from a water supply. Ibig sabihin ko may matubo da, okay, there is a contaminant or mga bacteria which is dangerous para sa mga residents or para sa aton ng mga tao that would cause food poisoning, okay, okay since it will cause illness. You have here a color of uh, fecal coliform. Count provide a general measure of the presence of your pathologic organism in a water supply. For drinking water, the current maximum contaminant level okay, for a total coliforms, including the fecal coliform, is less than one colony in every 100 ml. Okay? 
municipal water department must regularly test the water supply and must take actions if more than 5% of the sample in any month, okay, man test positive for your coliform nga bacteria. Ibig sabihin, kung may magtubo da nga isa, or hindi, um, more than one because it is less than one, okay, dapat para maging negative siya, it's either two or more. Okay, pero sa'yo mo nga colony, sa'yo mo nga pag-grow di. Kasi mga agar, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, it's more than 10 gigs. So, it is very positive for fecal coliform bacteria. Okay, then you have here 5% of the sample. Ibig sabihin, if you have uh, 100 nga sample. Okay, 100 na nga sample. Hindi nga 100 ml lang klasa. 100 sample of different water sample sa amun ng municipality. Ang isa rin kuha mo sa tiyak nga barangay, next sa isa nga barangay, sa isa pagid, okay? Then, for example, sa isa nga barangay, lima ka sample na ginkuha mo to come up of 100 sample. Okay? Sa municipality nga na or sa mga barangay nga na, sa so 100 mga sample, if you have more than 5%, Sabihin, kung limada sa 100 mga sample naging positive for your coral form, okay, there must be an action for your decontamination. It track mo kung sabihin ang base may leakage da, may kung sabihin may nagka uh, nakaangot na pipe na nagka-cause ng contaminant, may naka-open da na maka-cause na maka-invade or maka-contaminate ang imong pathologic bacteria. Now, let us now proceed sa itong mga techniques, methods, and procedures also sa itong mga protocol. Okay, a technique is in any chemical or physical principle that we can use to study and analyze. There are many techniques that we can use to determine the concentration of the lead in your drinking water. In a graphite furnace, atomics absorption spectrophotometry, okay, or ang iyang uh, acronym which is GFAAS, okay, graphite furnace, atomic absorption spectrophotometry, Uh, spectroscopy, like, uh, spectrophotography, spectroscopy. For example, we first convent, uh, convert your aqueous lead ions into free atoms. A process is what you call your atomization. Okay, we then measure the amount of your light absorbed by your free atom, thus your GFAAS, uses both a chemical principle, which is the kina-convert yung imong mga lead ions into free atoms, okay? Then, you have your physical method, which is the absorption of light. Then, you have your method. Okay, the method is applied of your technique for a specific analyte in a specific matrix, as shown there is a dalum. You have the GFAES method that determines the concentration of the lead in water is different from the lead in your soil kag sa imong nga dugo or sa imong blood. You have here the techniques. Okay? Ang imong di, which is your graphite furnace, atomic absorption spectroscopy. Okay? Kung sa imong nga soil, okay, lain ang imong nga procedure. Pero dito sa water, okay, you have your APHA and also ASTM. Then you have your EPA nga protocol. Okay, anong mga meaning sina? Okay, this chart shows that the hierarchy of relationship between your techniques, method that use the, te uh, that, that use the technique and procedure, and also protocol for a certain uh, method. The population APHA stands for your American Public Health Association. Okay, that was providing the procedure for the lead detection in your water. And also for your ASTM, okay, it stands for an American Society for Testing materials and the protocols that must be followed sa mga GFAAS is from your EPA. EPA stands for your Environmental Protection Agency. Okay, what is a procedure? Procedure is a set of written directions that tells us how to apply a method to a particular sample including the information on how to collect their sample, okay, how to handle your interference, and how to validate your results. A method may have several procedures and each analyze, analyze or agency adapt it to a specific need. Okay, pero sa tira sa babaw, you have here mga providers ang yung mga procedures. Okay, the American Public Health 
IGNC and also the American Society for Testing Material publishes separate procedures to determine the concentration of lead in your water. Okay, finally, a protocol is a set of stringent guidelines that specify a procedure that your analyst must, analyst must follow. Analyst is the one who will be conducting the test. Okay, must follow in uh, if an agency is to accept the result. Okay, your protocol are common when the uh, a result of your analysis supports or defines your public policy. When determining the concentration of the lead in your water under the Safe Drinking Water Act, for example, the analyst must use a protocol specified by your EPA or your Environmental Protection Agency. This must be obvious and under your four values of your analytical methodology, ideal, ideally, a protocol uses a previous validated procedures before developing and validating a procedure. A method is an analysis must be selected. Okay, the difference with your between your protocol. Okay, protocol is okay. Is an a protocol uses your previous validated ng mga procedure. Bisa bihin if it is successful. Uh, then kung yaplay mo siya as standard. Okay, therefore may mga uh, procedural kapag dyan nga follow, which will turn into a protocol nga mas uh, mas gina implement na. okay before developing and validating the procedure okay this requires in turn in into an initial screening of available technique to determine those that have the potential for monitoring your analyte now verifying analytical techniques okay the analysis of a sample generates a chemical or physical signal that is proportional to the amount of your analyte in the sample this signal must uh, may be anything we can measure, such as your volume or your absorbance. It is convenient to divide your analytical technique into two general classes based on whether the signal is proportional to the mass or mole sang imunga analyte, or it is proportional to the analyte's concentration. By considering the two graduated mga cylinder, each of which contains a solution of 0 0.01 um, Molarity of your copper NO3 to okay, your cylinder 1 contains 10 ml or 1 times 10 raised to negative 4 moles of your copper and 2 moles of your are moles containing 20 ml or 2 times 10 raised to negative 4 moles of your copper. Okay, it is a technique that responds to the ab absolute amount of your analyte in a sample. Then, the signal due to aton uh, nga uh, equation, which is SA. SA stands for your analytes. And then, ang imong nga KA. KA stands for your proportional nga constant, which is ang imong nga N is the number of your moles in grams of your analytes. For example, okay, because your cylinder 2 contains twice as many as your moles sa imong nga cylinder 1. Okay, analyze, uh, analysis the, analyzing the content of your cylinder 2 gives the signal twice as large as your cylinder 1. Uh, you have here. A 2 graduated cylinder containing uh, 0 0.1 molarity of your copper and O3, although the cylinder contains the same concentration of C2. Uh, C, CU, copper LA. Okay, the cylinder on the left contains 1 uh, times 10 raised to negative 4 copper and the cylinder on the right contains 2 uh, times 10 raised to negative 4 na copper. In the second class of your analyt analytical uh, technique are those that respond to your analyte's concentration. Okay, if you're C, okay, then may gaangot nga A. Okay, this is for your concentration. Same yung hapon, the KA. KA stands for your proportional, okay, proportionality constant. And same mo nga SA. Okay, for your SA, it is for your sample and light. Diba? Pero sa babaw, pagkalain niya lang to is ang imo nga constant, which is naging CA. This is the solution of the oat cylinder at the same concentration of your copper. Okay, this analysis yields identical signals. 
Okay, what is a technique? Okay, a technique that responds to the absolute amount of your analyte is a total analysis technique. Okay, mass and volume are the most common signals for your total analysis technique and the corresponding technique are gravimetry and also your titrimetry in which few exceptions the signal of which analysis technique is the result of one or more chemical reactions. The stoichiometry of which determines the value of your key A in equation 3.3.1. Okay, historically, the your key A, which is the proportional sang imunga ana like a proportional of your a proportionality constant. Really. Now, let's proceed. So, really, most of early analytical method used to the total analysis technique for this reason. Total analysis technique are often called your classical technique. Okay, your spectroscopy and also your electrochemistry in which your optical or your electrical signal is proportional due to the relative amount of your analyte in a sample are examples of your concentration techniques. Okay, and the relationship between the signal and your analyte concentration is a critical function that depends on the experimental condition that the instrumentation used to the measure the signal. For this reason, the value of your key A in this equation is determined experimentally. Or gina perform gina siya. Okay? Since most concentration technique rely on measuring an optimal or electrical signal, they also are known as your instrumental technique. Now, selecting an analytical method. A method is the application of a technique to a specific analyte in a specific matrix. We can develop an analytical method to determine the concentration of your lead in your drinking water using any technique of your mentioned sa atong previous na section. Okay, a gravimetric method, for example, might precipitate the lead in your PBSO4 or P for your PBCRO4 that use the precipitate mass as your analyte signal. Also, the mga lead form several soluble complexes in which we can use to design a complex titrimetric method. Okay, where was I? Since I umbrella ko. Okay. And okay, as shown, we can use your graphite for an atomic absorption spectroscopy to determine the concentration of lead in your drinking water. Finally, a lead multiple oxidation state or your PB, which is your PB0, PB2 plus CAG4 plus makes a feasible variety of your electrochemical methods. Ultimately, the requirement for your analysis Analysis determine the best method in choosing the among the available method. We must give consideration to some of the following design criteria, which is your accuracy, your precision, your sensitivity, your selectivity, your robustness, rigidness, scale of your operation, analysis time, the availability of your equipment, and also the cost. Okay, so let us break down kung ano ang mga criteria. First, you have your accuracy. Okay, accuracy is how closely the result of your experiment agrees with the true or expected result. We can express your accuracy as the absolute error or your E, which is obtained result minus your expected result. Or pwede man siya maging in a percent nga value, which is obtained result minus expected result divided by your expected nga result times 1. Okay. A method of your accuracy depends on many things including the signal of your source, the value of your Ka, okay, and the case of handling the sample without the loss or mga contamination. Okay. A total analysis technique such as your gravimetry and also titrimetry okay, often produce some more accurate results than, uh, than does your concentration technique because we can measure the mass and the volume with high accuracy. Okay? And because the value of your key A is known exactly through your stoichiometry uh, or stoichiometry because it is likely that we know the true result, we use the expected and your 
or expected or accepted na result to evaluate your accuracy. For example, we might use the standard reference material which has been accepted or your value to establish your analytical method different or accuracy and we will find more detailed treatment in your accuracy sa next pa mga chapter including discussion of source and errors next is your precision okay when the uh, when a sample is analyzed or several times the individual result may vary from your trial to trial or kapila mo siya liwat liwat okay your precision is the measure of your variability okay the close and the closer the agreement between the individual analysis and more precise the result. The example of the uh, result shown in Derisa Dalog, okay, in the uh, illustration, okay, figure uh, shows that your upper figure 3.4.1 uh, okay, is at the raise of above. Okay, the concentration of your K plus, K plus, K is 4 potassium, okay, in the sample for your serum are more precise than other lower satum. Okay, you have here okay, the data from the upper half okay are more precise does not mean that the first set of your result is more accurate in fact neither set of your result may be accurate nga man because sa yung mga value you have here sa mo letter A and letter B okay for your letter A okay the Kapila mo sa luwaton, this is iyang result. So, you have here, 6. Okay. Sa 6 na mark, kaisa nagawa ang mong mga result. Sa line before sa mga 6 ka tatlo. Sa before, pagi dyan na ka dua. And sa tunga sa mga 5.9 kag 6.0 ka isa. Pag you have also here, around sa mga 6.1, 6.0... 
Now, we have here to do uh, two determinations of your concentration of your potassium in a serum, showing that the effect of your precision. Okay, and the distribution of your individual result, the data A, okay, is less scattered, and therefore, you are your more precise nga data compared sa imong nga letter B, which is ga lapta gig. Then you have here, a method's precision depends on several factors, including your uncertainty of your measuring of your signal and the ease of handling your sample reproductively. Okay, in most cases, we can okay, measure the signal of your total analysis technique with a higher precision than in this case of your concentration method. Next is your sensitivity. Okay, it is the ability to demonstrate Okay, sorry for the brief pause. Ayun mga papis, kundi di amagahod. Okay, the ability to demonstrate that two samples have different amounts of your analyte is an essential part of many analyses. Okay, a method sensitivity is the measure of its ability to establish that such difference is significant. Sensitivity is often confused with the uh, method of your detection limit. Okay? which is the smallest amount of your analyte we can determine with uh, with up confidence. Okay? Ang methods nga sensitivity, it measures the ability to establish that such difference is significant. Ibig sabihin, it can identify the specific nga analyte nga gina-measure mo. However, ang iyang gina-confusan, which is your detection limit, okay, your detection limit is the smallest nga value nga pwede mo ma-detect. Like, the smallest amount present ang aranda nga analyte. Okay? Confidence as well seen in chapter 4 with your statistical concept that builds the idea of relation of your result. For this reason, we will postpone our discussion for detection limit sa next mga chapter. For now, the definition for your detection limit given is sufficient, which is your sensitivity is to equivalent the proportional constant or your TA in equation sa babaw. Okay, if your SA, okay, has the smallest difference we can measure between two signals, then the smallest detectable difference is your absolute amount or your relative amount of your analyte, okay, is equal to this equation, which is your NA is equal to SAKA, your sample analyte, kag imunga proportional nga constant. Suppose, for example, that our analyte signal is measure of a mass using your balance, whose smallest detectable increment is around 0 0.001 grams. If our method sensitivity is 0 0.2 or a 0 0.200, then our method can conveniently detect a difference in mass of a little as your Na is equals to positive negative 0 0.001 grams. Okay? Or, uh, kung 2 ang imo to, di ba? Yung 0 0.02, okay, it is equal to 0 0.0005 grams. Okay? For the two methods of your same SA, the method which is greater sensitivity that is the method with the larger KA is better able to discriminate between smaller amounts of your analyte. Next is your specificity and selectivity. Okay. Okay, analyte method is specific if the signal depends only with your analyte. Okay. Although your specificity is ideal, few analytical methods are free from interferences. Okay, ano mga interferences ta? Okay, other nga mga analyte nga ara sa given nga sample. Aside pa da, you also have your mga interferences nga it's either makapadugang or those similar sila composition sa mga analyte. That's why they are being counted or being hindered. Okay, then we have your interference contributes to the signal we expand sa uh, amotong uh, equation. Okay, to include the contribution in its samples signal. Okay, you have here S sample is equals to SA plus SI is equals to your proportional constant and your uh, analytical plus your KINI. Whereas yung imunga SI, okay, 
S I stands for the interference in your sample. Okay, to the signal and your KI stands for the interference sensitivity and your N1 and your CI are the moles or grams and also sa concentration sa yung mga interferent in the sample respectively. Now for your sensitivity, it is the measure of a method's freedom from interference. A method selectivity for an interference relative to the analyte is defined by a selectivity coefficient which is your KAI. Your KEI naman yung equation is your KI and KA. Ibig sabihin, the proportional of your uh, interferent and proportional of your uh, constant. Okay. Many may be positive or negative depending on the signal of your KI and KA. Okay. The selectivity coefficient is greater than 1 or less than the negative 1. When the method is more selective for the interferent than your analyte. Although your KA and your KI usually are positive, they can also be negative. For example, some analyte method work by measuring the concentration of your species that remains after if the uh, after uh, sang imong reaction with your react or sa imong analyte. Okay, as the analyte's concentration increases, the concentration of the species that produce that signal decreases. Ibig sabihin, you will have your KA and KI negative value and the signal becomes smaller. If the signal uh, in the absence of your analyte is assigned a value of your zero, then the subsequent signals are negatives. Okay, determining the selectivity coefficient values is easy if we know the uh, know the values of your KI and your KA. We as shown sa ato nga sample dito sa we can determine your KIA by measuring your S. Um, the presence and also in the absence of imunga interferences. Now, for developing any procedural uh, or procedure method, okay? After selecting a method, the next step is to develop the procedure that accomplish our goals for your analysis. In developing your procedure, we give attention to the compensating for the interference or selecting and also co calibrating your equipment to acquire a representative sample and validating your methods. Okay, compensating for your interference, what is that? Okay, a method accuracy depends on the sensitivity of your analyte. Okay, even the best method, however, may not be free from your interference. Liwat na, ara ang mga interference. All we can do is to reduce it para mas accurate, kag precise ang imunga result. Okay? Potential interference may be present in the sample itself or in any reagent using during your analysis. When the sample is free of your interference, the total signal or your S total is the sum of your signal due to your analyte. Then for your SA and for your signal due for your interference in your reagent or your S reagent or re S reag. Okay, the S total is equal to your SA plus S uh, reagent is equal to your uh, analyte nga constant and for your uh, numerical value sa yung mga analyte kag plus your uh, ang S reg tagani S reg is the interference sa yung mga reagents. Okay, without the independent determination of your S reg, okay, we cannot solve for your equation for the most and also concentrations in one analyte. To determine the uh, contribution of your s reg in your equation, we measure the signal for method blank. A solution that does not contain the sample, consider for an example. A procedure in which we dissolve a 0.1 grams of your portion of your solvent and add the several reagent and dilute it into 100 ml. Yeah. Yeah. So, a method blank cannot compensate for the interference and it is part for your sample matrix. If we happen to know the interference identity and the concentration, then we must instead find a method for separating the analyte and interference before continuing your analysis. A method known or a method blank also known as your agent blank will be the sample as uh, when the sample is liquid or is the solution, when you use the equivalent volume of your inert solvent as a substitute for your sample. 
lastly your your uh, uh, may calibration pag ito may sampling and your validation for your calibration naman yung class okay a sample definition of your quantitative analysis method is the mechanism for converting a measurement the signal into the amount of your analyte in a sample assuming that we can correct the interference also, ang yung quantitative analysis is nothing more than your solving sa pagyas na yapon nga equation. Okay, to solve this equation, we need the value of your proportional uh, proportional sample. And for that total analysis method, usually we know the value of your Ka before it defines as by the stoichiometry okay, of your chemical reaction responsible for the signal for the concentration method. However, the value of your Ka usually is a complex function in your experimental condition. Your calibration also is the process for experimentally determining the value of your Ka by measuring the signal for one or more standard sample, each of which contains a known concentration of your analyte. Okay, when using several Standards with different concentration of your analyte, the result is best viewed usually by plotting your SA versus your concentration of your analyte in a standard. Okay, such a plot known as your calibration curve, as also uh, an example of which shown there is a talong. You have your calibration curve. Okay, the example of your calibration curve is filled with your zero, uh, with your dot, and the result of your five standard nga sample each is different concentration of your analyte sabihin la in analyte la in nga value la in nga uh, experiment may ubrahon mo ma change kada yun sang calibration okay so kada change mo na you will be using your blank okay dire sa babaw okay your blank to make sure that what you're uh, calibrating for is for your new nga analyte now, for your sampling class, selecting appropriate method for executing, it probably helps you to ensure that our analysis is accurate. If we analyze the wrong sample, however, then the accuracy of our work is a little uh, consequence. Okay, a proper sampling strategy ensures that our sample are representative of the material from which they are taken, bias of a non-representative sampling and contaminating uh, samples during our or after their collection are two examples of sampling errors that can lead to significant error in your accuracy. Okay, it is important to realize that sampling errors are independent of errors that analytical method or your are as a result. We cannot correct a sampling error in your laboratory by example evaluating a reagent plan. Your validation, yeah, okay, after mo na ma perform ay mga blanking ang imong calibration. And also, uh, using the appropriate sample, okay, your validation is when you have a confidence in your procedure. You must demonstrate that it is, provide a, a acceptable result, okay, as what we call your validation. Perhaps the most important part of your validating a procedure is establishing the precision with your accuracy are appropriate for the problem we are trying to solve. We also ensure that the written procedure has sufficient detail so that the different analysts, okay, mga perform what our laboratory will obtain the comparable result or with a high uh, accuracy or same nga result or mass precise. Then, ideally validation uses a standard sample whose con uh, composition closely matches the sample we will analyze. In the absence of appropriate standard, we can evaluate your accuracy by comparing results to those obtained using a method known as your accuracy. So that will be all at chapter 2. That, uh, uh, stay tuned for chapter 4 and God bless always stay safe.